Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the next part of my bookcase tour. I'm not sure which episode we're on. I've actually filmed this episode. I filmed it all, edited it all, rendered it, and then um, my computer wanted to do a check disc when it loaded up, so I let it do it, and then it just wiped the video. So the file was still there, but it had zero file size and was corrupted. So thanks for that. So uh, we'll do this again. In, uh, in the last one of these, it was a while ago now, I will admit, but in the last one we did uh, Stephen King. So moving on from King, we have David Kirby, and this is Animal Factory. And this is arguably one of, if not the best, books on uh, animal agriculture and factory farming. And there are lots of interesting stories in this about what it's done to kind of communities. So for example, there's a small town where one of the teachers said she just spends all day swatting flies and... Uh, like the water supplies all got ruined and not very nice, but um, yeah The subtitle of it is the looming threat of industrial pig dairy and poultry farms to humans in the environment And uh, yeah, I read that while doing research my novel meat. It's one of the reasons why I ended up going vegan as well and uh, Yeah, recommend it All right, here we have uh, the walking dead issue 132 happiness by Kirkman, Adlard, Guardiano and Rathburn and uh, this came free with like a loot crate or something like that. Ended up making its way into my hands. Yeah, it's a loot crate exclusive. And it was alright. I do plan to read the Walking Dead series eventually. I just need to get a bind up of some sort. Then we have The Facebook Effect by David Kirkpatrick. It's very shiny. And um, this book basically covers the first 10 or so years of uh, Facebook. I, I realised when filming it last time that... Because uh, this was published in 2010. And so this was actually published closer to the launch of Facebook than to the current date. So obviously a lot of stuff has changed since then. But if you want to know like kind of the origin of the site and all this stuff about it being built in Zuckerberg's dorm room and stuff, check it out. And if you get lost on a desert island, you can use it to do Morse code. Then we have The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. It's obviously a children's classic. This is a Paragon edition. And uh, it's quite different from the movie, from what I remember, but um, certainly worth reading. I mean, they're both worth checking out, to be honest. Uh, yeah, if you're, but if you're a fan of the movie, don't go in expecting it's going to be exactly the same, because it's not, but it is still good. And there are some, like, cool new bits. Here we have Seeing What Others Don't, The Remarkable Way We Gain Insights by Gary Klein. This was one I was sent from uh, Nicholas Breeley Publishing. They actually sent me a whole bunch of books back in the day. Lots of non-fiction. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's well, it says here, you know, it's like applied psychology. We've got blurbs from Daniel Kahneman and Malcolm Gladway, both of who I have... I've not read them both. I've read uh, Gladwell. But um, yeah, it's all about how we see insights and how to kind of... I guess how to train your brain to spot insights as well, you know. And we have Richard Koch, The 80-20 Principle and 92 Other Powerful Laws of Nature. The 80-20 Principle is also called the Pareto Principle. And it's the idea that you get kind of 80% of your results from 20% of your action. So you want to focus more on that 20% because you're getting most of the value from it, you know. And uh, yeah, th th that covers this, but all kinds of other scientific laws like the theory of evolution and that kind of thing. And then kind of explains how you can apply that to business. Here we have Indians by Arthur Coppett. So this is a play that I actually picked up from the book exchange at our local art center. I don't remember too much of it, but I do remember enjoying it. And uh, I mean, I like plays anyway. Just It's just, I like the layout and everything. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, I should probably reread that sometime soon. Then we have The Book of Riga, a city in short fiction, edited by Eva Aglagio Christone and Becca Parkinson. This is from, uh, who is it from, from Comma Press? Yeah, Comma Press. And inside we've got Powers Bankowskis, Ilza Janzone, Arno Junz, Sven Kuzmins, Vilis Lasitas, Andron Nyberger, Gundega Reps, Dace Ruxan, Christine Yelv, and Joris Zverdzdins. I'm sorry, I've probably just butchered everyone's names. But basically, these are all short stories by Latvian authors that are set in the city of Riga, which is the Latvian capital. Here we have Last Call at the Nightshade Lounge by Paul Kruger. This is like a very weird book because the, the plot in it is basically this bartender is helping to sort of fight creatures and... Uh, Basically, all the different um, cocktails give you different powers. So, for example, here we have the Irish coffee, an elixir to induce illusions. And it has a recipe for it and everything. Yeah, really good, actually. Like, feel, like, it didn't feel gimmicky, if that makes sense. And I have a sensitive nose for gimmicks. 
Here we have Ladybird Books, Great Civilizations, The Vikings. So this is basically a, like a facsimile edition of a 1976 Ladybird book. And uh, I like the Vikings, and Ladybird books are cool, so that's why I've got that. Here we have Kyle P. Lacey, a Twitter marketing for dummies, and this is just one of the for dummies books for Twitter. The only problem with this is that, well, for a start, this edition in particular is outdated. I don't know if there's a new edition, but so much of it is just, you, you don't need to know that much to start Twitter, you know? Like, my mum uses Twitter, and she just signed up and started using it. Whereas that has like a chapter on choosing a username, you know, it's kind of, you don't need it. <laughs> Here we have uh, Jag Lal 1400, Empower the Courage Within. And uh, I don't really remember this too much, I'll show you the art style, so it's a graphic novel. But the blurb does sound intriguing. The monster's power is your silence, your power is your voice. 1400 is a hard-hitting story that delves into the inner psyche of the emotional battle of young Sharonji, who through her nightmares we see struggle to lift the lid after the trauma of rape and abuse that she suffers at the hands of the monsters. Will Sharonji be able to empower the courage within and raise her voice, or will the fear and turmoil consume her to silence? Okay, then we have Derek Landy, Skullduggery Pleasant, The Dying of the Light, which I'm not going to say too much about because I think most booktube uh, viewers are probably aware of this one. I know uh, Graham Quigley is a big Landy fan as well. And um, I got basically I got sent that one for review, but they I, I obviously hadn't read the rest of the series. So now, and I think it's the last one, so now I don't really want to revisit it too much. But maybe one day, we'll see. Here we have David Langford, The Weirdest Link, Terry Pratchett's Discworld quiz book. So uh, I, I guess I'll ask a question here. Guild of Lawyers, what is the important repeated message of Lucy's Rule 19? I don't know. I'm going to guess it's something like don't panic or stay calm. It's remember to never forget Rule 1, as recorded in Thief of Time. There we go. Here we have L.A. Larkin, Devour. Uh, this is like a... Th thriller set in the Antarctic I believe and Olivia Wolf thriller I basically got it because Peter James had blurred it and someone offered it for, to me for free and unfortunately I, I don't really remember it but I'm sure it was excellent why not Philip Larkin the North Ship so here is some of uh, Larkin's poetry I'll read you one the dancer butterfly or falling leaf which I took which ought I butterfly or falling leaf which ought I to imitate in my dancing and if she were to admit the world weaved by her feet is leafless, is incomplete. And if she abandoned it, broke the pivoted dance, set loose the audience. Then would the moon go raving, the moon, the anchorless moon, go swerving down at the earth for a catastrophic kiss. Uh, here we have Stieg Larsson's Millennium Trilogy. So we have the girl who kicked the hornet's nest, the girl who played with fire, and the girl with the dragon tattoo. Read these in uh, a summer, you know, a couple of years ago. They were decent enough. I think if you like, you know, crime, you'll you'll like them. I think Ball Book Geek is your man to talk to about those books because I think he's a, you know, a much bigger fan than me and so could talk in greater detail. Here we have Don Latin, the Harvard Psychedelic Club, and this is about like Timothy Leary and Ram Dass and all those guys who were uh, pioneered the use of LSD at Harvard University, I guess. And uh, I, I got this book from my old work. They basically had a load of shelves that they just had random books in, basically as decorations. And then they decided they were going to get rid of them and donate all the books to char charity. And uh, this one did not make it to the charity shop. And then we have Latvia, 100 Snapshot Stories. And uh, this actually isn't available to purchase, but you can get a download of it as a PDF. Um, but I was given this this beautiful printed copy when I visited the country and uh, it's basically just a hundred different You know bits of Latvian culture. So we had rye bread here. Oh, hang on uh, ley lines. Let's do ley lines Indeed it is the stuff of fairy tales about magical streams and crisscrossed force fields deep below the surface However, many Latvian architects still check the ley lines before signing off on the plans of a house Two to three meters apart, intersecting at right angles, this network of mystical subterranean water energy lines was known to other northern European peoples too. A well dug on a cross point was thought to have healing properties, but an oak tree there would attract lighting, light, lightning. How can one tell their influence? An instant cure for insomnia by moving the bed off a ley line. A line of trees in a forest coincidentally growing in a straight line. The dog or cat choosing an unusual place as a favorite napping spot. Oh, so my laptop is a ley line. Uh, fun fact, the pyramid stage at Glastonbury Festival is built on 
a crossing point of two ley lines. Hasn't attracted any lightning yet though. Okay, here we have The Gun Seller by Hugh Laurie. And yeah, it is that Hugh Laurie who plays House and does various other things. He was in Fry and Laurie and been in movies and that all of the things. But uh, here he's uh, in, in his novelist incarnation. It's kind of like a humorous spy novel. It reminds me a bit of uh, Graham Greene. So if you like Graham Greene and Hugh Laurie, check it out. Okay, then we have D.H. Lawrence, Lady Chatterley's Lover. And uh, D.H. Lawrence Selected Poems. So I'm just going to read you a poem to, to, for Lawrence. Uh, but I did enjoy Lady Chatterley's Lover. I read it when I was about 17, something like that. Okay, God, these are all long poems. A white blossom. A tiny moon as small and white as a single jasmine flower leans all alone above my window on night's wintry bower. Liquid as lime tree blossom, soft as brilliant water or rain. She shines, the first white love of my youth. Passionless and in vain. D. H. Lawrence, everybody. Here we have Ursula K. Le Guin, Fisherman of the Inland Sea, and this is the only Le Guin I've read so far. I got this from a second-hand book, uh, bookshop, and it is a really beautiful edition and has like, you know, just nice layouts and all this stuff. But uh, I wasn't too impressed by it, unfortunately. I do want to read some more of her stuff, though. For me, this was a bit too hard sci-fi, and it just wasn't what I was in the mood for. So. I guess maybe I'll, in, I'll, I'll try it again some other time. Here we have How to Stand on Your Head by Martin Leach. And literally the reason that I have this book, and it, it's going to make me sound weird, because it made me sound weird just when I was editing it, but that is my ex-girlfriend's mum. So my ex of, I don't know, many moons ago now, she, she mentioned that her mum had been in this book, so I thought I'd get a copy. Not to look at the pictures. That's not what I got it for. I thought it would be funny. It wasn't, and I never learned how to stand on my head. Anyway, here we have Harper Lee, To Kill a Mockingbird, one of my most reread books, I would say. I reread this last year, in fact, and I'll link to a review that I did of it. Um, yeah, just a classic. Everyone should read it. We have Jai Lee, A Talk Back, The Bubble Project, and basically, this is just, it's like artist group or whatever. They got, uh, they gave people these, they put these bubbles on, you know, posters and whatnot, and got people to write on them. So, for example, this says date rape American style vagina on Batman. <laughs> Good job I don't monetize my videos, isn't it? This guy is saying, are we white yet? So, yeah. Then we have Godspeed, the Kurt Cobain graphic novel by Barnaby Legg, Jim McCarthy and Flame Boy. And this is exactly what it sounds like. Hey, look, there's Courtney Love. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's just... The story of Kurt Cobain's life, I guess. It doesn't always get it 100% accurate. But, uh, you know, if you're a Nirvana fan. Like Madman Reads and Rocks, I can imagine, would enjoy this. Okay, and finally we have John Lennon, In His Own Right and A Spaniard in the Works. Which are actually two novels bound up in one. And then Skywriting by Word of Mouth as well. And uh, Lennon kind of writes whimsical prose poetry. So I'll just read you some random thing. Here we go. Randolph's party. It was Christmas time, but Randolph was alone. Where were all his good pals? Bernie, Dave, Nicky, Alice, Betty, Freeba, Viggy, Nigel, Alfred, Clive, Stan, Frank, Tom, Harry, George, Harold. Where were they on this day? Randolph lugged sagly at his only crisp book cart from his dad who did not live there. I can't understand this being so lonely on the day of the year when one would surely spect a pal or two, thought Randolph. Anyway, he carried on putting up the desecrations and muzzletoe. All of a surgeon, there was a merry timble on the door. Who but who could be a knocking on my door? He opened it, and there standing there, who but his only pals? Bernie, Dave, Nicky, Alice, Betty, Freeba, Viggy, Nigel, Alfred, Clive, Stan, Frank, Tom, Harry, George, Harold, weren't they? So yeah, a bit odd, but you know, it's John Lennon, so you can forgive him for being a bit odd. So that is it for this uh, bookshelf tour. Now, hopefully, I can get this edited again and eventually posted, and then we can crack on with some more tours. But in the meantime, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, which ones. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.